Hello everyone and welcome back to another Gibbering GM video and in this video I am going to talk about consequences. My name's Inwills and welcome to the InCrowd. Hello and welcome back. Yes, I have a beard. Yes, if you want to know why, then catch up about my face paralysis in the video somewhere around here. Anyway, welcome back to the Gibbering GM and today I want to talk about consequences. Now, over the years, believe me, I've had experience of a multitude of character generation systems from the simplistic process in Tunnels and Trolls, does anybody actually remember that game apart from me, to the more complex nature of character generation, for example, in like Shadowrun 5th edition. So each system that you look at when creating characters has benefits and downfalls, but all allow you to create unique characters with a range of positive and possibly negative attributes. But this is when I have to talk about a constant bee in my bonnet. That means things that annoy me, if you're not familiar with the English phrase. Many players, I think, enjoy creating that perfect character. They learn more and more and more about the rules and as they learn more and more about the rules they understand which skills to take and which attributes or characteristics can be lowered and which ones should not be messed with at all. And as they enjoy the adventure again they play in such a way that they justify and prevent anything from negative from happening at all. And this is what I want to talk about today. This idea that sometimes players, and not all players, but sometimes players want to avoid the consequences of certain actions. So from um, the moment that a player starts their journey within a campaign, I want them to recognise and realise that their actions, their reactions, their choices and their decisions all have consequences. The campaign worlds that I create are dynamic. They evolve and change as the players interact with them. I used to think that it was a privilege for players to enter my campaigns and that I should play the style that I enjoyed and interacted and promote interactions that I enjoyed with the world. But I now know that this is not the case and that we all have ownership over the campaign world and the adventures that we create. And I need to make adventures and create encounters for both myself and my enjoyment, but also for the player's enjoyment. However, this does not mean that everything goes their way. Oh no, far from it. So right the way from character generation, right the way to the last adventure in a long campaign, everything that the players decide to do should in my opinion, have consequences. These are not necessarily negative or punitive. They could be beneficial and positive, but they need to happen. So let's start off by talking about throwaway attributes. I'm not naive, every system has them. Those characteristics or attributes that the character cons the players consider pointless and never invest points into them. Yes, there might be skills which they contribute to, but many players have tried to overrule those skills or wiggle their way out of them by some effective role playing. Something that I have discussed in a previous video. See card, or is it there? 
So the more observant of you might have realized that I have now changed my t-shirt. Now the reason this is, is not for some wonderful fashion decision, but I actually write the script for these videos as a blog post. And then I use that to create the video. And although I am 100% sure that I actually wrote all the blog post and the script, when I came to record this video, I suddenly realized that only the, the content that I did in the orange t-shirt, shall we say, was still available. Everything else had gone. Hence, I am recording the rest of this video on a different day. Okay then, so back to consequences and we were talking about throwaway attributes. Now these throwaway attributes will have little to no impact on the actual game and campaign. So players suddenly realise that they're, if they're not going to help, then why put any points into them? Let's just reduce it down to the bare minimum. And I have to agree that that's exactly what I would do. But surely having these stats low should have some consequence within the campaign. But there is something else that I dislike even more in character generation. So, and I actually do think, just thinking about it there, I think this is worse than actually having throwaway stat. So a lot of the attributes might have a range of scores when there is neither a positive or a negative um, implication. So for example, strength might have a range of seven to 12, where you get no bonuses and no negatives either. And in this case, sometimes, maybe you, maybe not you, players just think, right, why go for 12 when I could go for seven? There is no advantage or disadvantage of that 12. So I might as well go in, put it right the way down to seven. So almost like another throwaway stat. Now, it doesn't matter if you're talking about a range of attributes, scores, say 7 to 12, or throwaway stat. I do think that there should be consequences in the campaign related to these stats. Now, if you are running a campaign, then you will, or playing in one, you will realize that there's very little character changing or moving. You know, you tend to stick with one character. And this probably means that you're never going to get the huge range of stats in any case. But because of this, this is when I would like to implement some consequences. So say, for example, there's a range of attributes score from 7 to 12 that I spoke about earlier that have no positive or negative impact. Then what I would be thinking about within my campaign is that the person who has seven, the character who has seven in an attribute has to be worse than the person with 12 in that attribute. Now, it doesn't mean that they're going to have negatives or anything like that, according to the rules, but I do think there should be a difference. So these rules are not um, written down anywhere. And I, a lot of the time I just adapt them on the fly. But I think, for example, so if we take agility, then the person, the character with the 12 in agility might find a task easy. Well, somebody with 11 or 10 might find it standard. Somebody eight and nine might find it hard. And somebody who only has seven in it will maybe find it very hard or formidable. And so within that range, players actually see the benefits of having a 12 skill rather than a 12 attribute rather than from a 7 attribute. Now at this point I am wondering whether or not I am too harsh. So if I am too harsh then please say so in the comments below. But stats are not the only aspect of a character that I think should have consequences. I also think their actions should as well. Now, if you are enjoying this or any other of my videos, then please consider liking, commenting and subscribing. And don't forget to press that bell button to receive a notification when my next video goes live. 
And if you would like to provide some additional support, then I'm always trying to cover my overheads via my Ko-fi page, where you can provide a one-off donation um, to the current goal that I'm working on. Or you can provide a monthly subscription on my Patreon page, where you can find a range of tiers with some great perks. All links to both my content and the support pages are down below. So I mentioned before that I run a dynamic campaign in which the players contribute to the storyline as much as I do as the GM. And because of this, I hope that the players are aware that everything that they do might have a consequence for the rest of the campaign. And do remember at this point, when I'm talking about consequences, I'm not saying that it will be negative. It has to be, it could be, the consequence could be either positive or negative. Again, so let me give you some examples. So in our um, Mithras campaign, Bartleby, the theist, um, went to the guard's drinking tavern to get some information about the adventure. Now, Af, while he was there, he bought the guards a drink and was pleasant to them, didn't speak down to them. And this really built up a rapport between the town guards and Bartleby, even so that now he actually has a passion called Friends of the Guards. And if you want to see what um, a passion is in the Mistress Rules, then there should be a card um, up here for that. So that was a consequence that actually proved helpful for Bartleby when he's doing his legwork. Now, Cyrus, in the initial um, campaign, made fun of a bluebird. Now, just so you know the background of this, a bluebird are low members of the Blue Order of sorcerers who carry messages around Lindo. The Blue Order is all about communication, teleportation, etc. And children or teenagers who might have some limited magical power join the Blue Order as bluebirds and carry messages and this is because within the campaign you have to actually gain a, a skill world to actually be able to read and write okay so what the bluebirds do are actually carrying messages around or the spoken word now it was when cyrus who's a member of the red order found the bluebird and started to make fun of her and called her a pigeon and said that she should join a, a better order i.e the Red Order. Now, after you've done that, I thought this could be interesting. Let's have a consequence. So Melanie, the bluebird in question, took Cyrus's advice and actually left the Blue Order and joined the Red. Now, you might be thinking, oh, that's a positive. But unbeknown to Cyrus, Melanie has significant magical powers and she has already taken over um, Cyrus in their progression throughout the ranks of the Red Order and it's becoming I because of the action that Cyrus did I've built up this antagonistic part of the campaign and it's proving really really fun I don't know whether or not Cyrus likes it but I certainly like the fun part of it so you know if a player or character wishes to attack the local patrolling guard for example then I'm not going to stop them and players can all, always justify why their characters are doing things. And, and I'm never going to go down the route of saying, OK, tell me why did you attack the guards? Because players can justify it one way or another. But I would let them do it because I know that there's going to be a consequence. All their actions have the opportunity, the the possibility of having that consequence. And in the same way as that if the party defeat the evil tyrant in the campaign, then there's going to be consequences, you know, and it's like they're going to be, everybody's going to look up at them as heroes and say, well done. And that's the positive consequence, but also they might appear on the hit list for the evil tyrant's brother or sister. And so the consequences exist. And something similar happened when, um, they, the party in the Mithras campaign went against Sniffer, who is the um, leader of the Thieves Guild in Lindo. 
So I think it's really important that these interactions and these consequences actually feed into the campaign and make the campaign have more depth, have more meaning, but also more, more personalization for the characters. And, you know, you have to, as a GM, I now have to keep a table about how players or characters interact with certain NPCs. For example, Annalyn, who's the local an um, alchemist that Cyrus kicked out of um, the hairy hobgoblin or threatened, you know, people like Cyrus dislike Annalyn. I think Hazard does as well, or is suspicious of him. Well, people like Bartleby and Hengis get on well with Annalyn. And so there's these wonderful interactions and possibilities there that actually increases the campaign's richness for relationships and possible encounters later on. I really do hope that this post or video doesn't come across as some kind of anti-player post. Far from it. What I'm trying to do is that I'm aiming to achieve a more in-depth, dynamic and rich campaign. I want the players to feel that they're co-creators of the setting and that when they do something, whether or not it's assigning an attribute score or actions in the game, then there's the possibility of them sending ripples of either positive or negative consequences across the whole campaign world. Choices players make, I feel, need to be reflected somewhere. Otherwise, those choices are based on nothing apart from making their character stronger or less weak or even weaker. OK, then. So next time you make up a character or you take an action in a campaign, think about the consequences, the myriad of options and pathways that could branch out from that point then let your imagination go and co-create your world with your players, allowing them by their own actions to create that dynamic world in which they're adventuring in. Hope you really enjoyed today's video, this video in the next series of the Gibbering GM. And I look forward to catching you all again next time. Until then, happy adventuring and I'll see you all later. Bye.